In activity eight, behavior of fish, students observe the behavior of the platys as well as changes in their behavior caused by various stimuli. First, they observe and describe the platy's response to smells, food, noise, movement, and other fish, then infer the importance of maintaining a stress-free environment for the platys. Finally, students will learn to recognize some of the behaviors exhibited by sick fish. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 8, Parts A and B, Aquariums from Activity 7, Plastic Dishes, Dropper, magnifiers, fish food, sand, and a plastic spoon. You will also need to provide crayons, white paper, beef bouillon cube, a mug, and warm tap water. To prepare for this activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 8, Parts A and B for each student. Dissolve half of a beef bouillon cube in a mug of warm water. Place the mug of bouillon, a bag of sand, and a plastic spoon at a distribution station. Do not feed the fish on the morning of the activity so that they will respond to the smell and presence of food. Each team will need their aquarium, a sheet of white paper, two plastic dishes, two magnifiers, one dropper, and crayons. To begin the activity, make a two-column chart and label it behavior. At the top of the first column, draw a stick figure of a person. At the top of the second column, draw a fish. Ask students to brainstorm a list of behaviors that they display every day and record their responses in the first column of the chart. Answers may include running, talking, swimming, sleeping, laughing, eating, breathing, and so on. Next, ask students what are some behaviors that fish display. Students will respond that fish eat, swim, dive, breathe, and so on. Record students' responses in the second column of the chart. Then ask, which behaviors do fish and people share? Circle the items in common on the chart, such as eat, swim, and breathe. Next, divide the class into teams of four and distribute a sheet of white paper to each team. Have students retrieve their aquariums and place them on the paper and ask students to observe the fish in their aquariums for five minutes. If the students observe any behaviors not already listed, add them to the chart. Distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 8, Part A, to each student. Tell students to choose one behavior that fish and people share and draw a picture showing how a fish and a person each would exhibit that behavior. Next, ask students, what might cause your behavior to change? The students may respond that they behave differently when they are hungry, scared, or sick. Explain that people's behavior changes when their feelings change and when things around them change. Inform students that they are going to observe how a fish reacts to changes in their environment. Next, distribute two plastic dishes, two magnifiers, and one dropper to each team of four. Have students place a teaspoon of sand in one dish and a small amount of fish flakes in the other. Tell students to fill their droppers with the beef bouillon. Place two drops of bouillon in the center of the aquarium and observe the reaction of the fish. The fish should quickly pick up the scent of the beef and begin excitedly scanning the surface of the water, looking for the source of the food smell. Then ask students, how do you think the fish knew it was there? They should understand that the fish must have smelled it. Next, have students add a pinch of fish food to their aquariums and observe what happens. The fish should swim to the surface of the water and gobble up the food. Then, instruct students to tap once on the side of the aquarium. The fish will most likely dart about the container or hide among the plants. Ask students, why do you think the fish darted away? Most will say that the noise scared the fish. Explain that in addition to the noise, the vibration in the water might also have startled the fish. Next, have students place their hands on one side of the aquarium. Again, the fish should dart in the opposite direction from the hands and possibly take cover in the plants. Ask students, why do you think the fish behaved this way? Students may guess that the fish saw a large object moving toward them and it scared them. Then, guide the students to slowly sprinkle a small amount of sand in the middle of the tank. Again, the fish should move away from the disturbance. Lastly, tell the teams to pair up and place two aquariums side by side and have them observe the reaction of the fish. Eventually, the fish in both tanks 
will gravitate toward each other and swim up and down the shared side of the tank in an excited or agitated manner. Ask students, what do these experiments tell you about your fish? These experiments should help students understand that fish can see, hear, smell, taste, and feel changes in their environment, which cause them to behave differently. Explain that these changes may be stressful to the fish, and they should not disturb their fish deliberately. Finally, ask students, how do you think a fish behaves when it is sick? Students may guess that the fish hides, does not eat, does not swim much, and so on. Inform students that you can tell a lot about the health of a fish by observing their behavior. Behaviors that are a sign that something is wrong include the fish's fins clamped to its body instead of fanned out, shaking or twitching, swimming sideways or tilted to one side, hiding, loss of appetite, gasping at the surface of the water, and rubbing itself against the walls or floor of the tank. If you observe any of these behaviors, consult your local pet store for advice on what to do. Have students complete Part B of the activity sheet. For each pair of pictures, instruct them to circle the picture that shows a healthy fish. Let students know that in the next activity, they will observe the behavior of pond snails. To conclude this activity, return the aquariums to their storage place. Discard the leftover bullion. Rinse the dishes and droppers and return all materials to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.